Welcome to Doak Campbell Stadium. And you might as well get used to the sound you're hearing. The Seminole War chant is going full throat. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Florida Gators, taking on the 11th ranked team in the land, the Florida State Seminoles. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's tee this one up. And the Seminoles will get us started with the opening kickoff. On the run from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Florida's offense will get the first crack at it here. The Sunshine State is so rich in talent. The players have known each other in many cases for a long time, and that brings the intensity to a fever pitch. And they do not like each other, Reese. Three of the four years that I was a part of this rivalry game, there were bench-clearing brawls in the middle of the field before opening kickoff. This game just feels different. This crowd bringing the energy and noise early. They'll leave it with him. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And when you play defensive end, it's all about getting off the football. You can tell, gets off the football really fast, gets in the backfield, gets the running back before he knows what hit him. What a play by the defensive end. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. To the air, it's Mertz. Got him downfield. All kinds of running room. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Gators! Hauled it in and just kept right on running to the hallelujah land. They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and I feel like momentum is always a big thing in any game, but in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. Getting set for the point after. And the PAT makes it 7 0. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. The kickoff team on the field, and he ought to just boom this thing through the end zone with that extra 15 yards on the penalty. No chance to return that one. A booming kickoff out of the back of the end zone. It's a touchback. So the Florida State Seminoles offense will try to get something started with their first possession. You know, David, both of these teams have a strong safety that can support the run and also disruptive in the passing game. I mean, it's just so nice to have a guy that's so physical, like a linebacker, but also can play like a DB. These guys are really revolutionizing defenses. They hit people, too. They are heat-seeking missiles. Nobody wants to run over the middle of the field against these guys. Seminoles were able to squeak out a close one the last time they saw the Gators. And in that game, the Seminoles just made more plays. It reminded me of back in 1998 when we lost up in Tallahassee and that essentially knocked us out of the national championship picture. That's the impact these games have in this rivalry. The give to the back. And he's tripped up, but not before picking up the first down. Seminoles have always been known for explosive, flashy, big plays. But think of guys like Dalvin Cook and the toughness that he ran with. That's on display here. And then those guys that I think of, too, with work done where you hand them the football and big plays can happen. And offenses have been built around that for years at Florida State, finding that guy to hand the ball to. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. 
Guys, you might know Florida State was once a women's college, didn't start playing football until later, and in fact, didn't start playing the Gators until 1958. Even though they haven't been playing a long time, this game has featured so many of the biggest names in the sport. You think about Bobby Bowden, Steve Spurrier on the sidelines, Charlie Ward, Chris Wanky, Tim Tebow, Danny Werfel, Heisman Trophy winners. This game has had it all. They make the stop, but not before the screen has hit him for a first down and much more really good execution by this offense. Nothing too surprising about seeing the Seminoles being productive in the passing game. Man, we can think back, Reese, to so many great offenses for Florida State, whether it's Charlie Ward or Chris Winkie, whoever it is, the trigger man being really, really good is the start of a great Florida State team. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. On the run, it's Uyangalale. Quickly complete. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Slant routes. They're good against man coverage, but they're good against zone coverage, too. If that receiver can find the soft spot between the linebacker and the DB, you'll take that throw all day. The Seminoles come to the line with a fresh set of downs. The give to the single back. And maybe they want to try somewhere else because there is nothing doing in the middle of this defense. That's a really good stop by the defense. Jesse, they need a few more. You've given up a bunch of yards on this drive and a bunch of plays, but all that matters is keeping them off the scoreboard. Yeah, it's that bend-don't-break mentality you're seeing right now, and this is the point where this defense has just got to lock in. Dialing up a second down pass play. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And he'll run into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Wait, Ken, can I get the director to give me a replay of that? I want to count the defenders. One, two, three. I mean, there's no way they had 11, right? I mean, that, that is frustrating. Defensively, what are you taught? Like, make them earn it, right? Play, play man. Press up on them. Make them earn it. Make them go the length of the field. Don't give up big plays or just give up big plays and don't have anybody in the camera shot and don't have anybody there to even miss a tackle. They'll try to tack one more on their score. Splits the uprights. So a well-executed eight-play, 75-yard drive. And they cap it off with a 32-yard touchdown pass. After that latest answer tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. Let's see if he can make a play on the return. And the returner runs out of real estate as he goes down. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Jesse looking to take it down the field for back-to-back -back touchdowns. I think it's really important for them moving forward, too, to have a lot of balance, right? You want to be able to keep this defense guessing, Paul. Yeah, and you got me searching for answers after that last drive. You stack another drive on top of this, their defense's heads are going to be spinning all over the place. It's first and ten from the 31. He's going to pass. Finds his man. It's Hanson. No, oh, he got loose. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. And a really good job by the quarterback being very decisive. He saw his matchup. He went for it. He attacked it. Got the positive gain. I would say he's going to find that guy a few more times today. They've come out with answers on this possession, and now another first down. He wants to take the top off. And it's incomplete. Good play downfield by the DB. Smart offensive coordinators, they're going to throw deep balls, especially those 50-50 balls you hear about all the time. My wide receiver is better than your DB. Well, not on this play. After the incompletion, looking at second down. To the air, it's Mertz. Quick strike complete. Oh, what a move! 
excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. Well, we see another catch by this guy. This defense is going to need to do a better job of tackling the catch. In coverage, I know they want to slap the ball away, but if you can't do it and force the incompletion, you've got to at least make sure you're able to drag him down to the ground as soon as he catches the ball. Looking for a physical attack from the guy. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? Well, you love to see that from the defense, right? It's like bend, don't break. They've given up a bunch of plays on this drive, but now that they're getting damn close to field goal range, you're seeing them start to stiffen up there. Yeah, and plays don't matter anymore. Yards don't matter. All that matters with these defenses nowadays is points and limiting them. Off play action. Fires to the middle. He's got an open man. Touchdown, Florida! Reeled it in and just made the house call. Defense has to be better on the back end. They knew this offense was going to come out, and they were going to challenge them. They were going to try to push the ball vertically down the field. They've now given up two touchdown passes in this game. They have got to shore up their play in the back half. Man, goodness gracious, this dude is on fire. I mean, he's already got 100 yards. We're in the first quarter. Like, I, I might want to think about double-teaming that guy. If he goes to the water bottle, I'm going to double-team him. Whatever he does, I'm on it. And the PAT gives him a 14-7 lead. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the score comes on a 35-yard pass for six. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. On the move from inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. They unleashed an aerial assault last time that took them right to the end zone, David. So, Reese, with that drive, I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish. Make this defense think. You put them back on their heels. Now, shoot, Palmer, you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up. Yeah, I like that idea, but I also like the fact that speed kills. And they've got it at the receiver position, so if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups, man, take advantage. Back to pass. It's Uyunga Lale. They'll run the screen. They're able to get him stopped just shy of the first down marker. Well, a nice gainer on that running back screen. Now, how about the offensive line getting downfield and getting blocks to really help out the back, find some space to go to work? So they're facing third and short from the 25. They'll run play action right down the middle. Got his man downfield. And he was loose and out the gate and doesn't go down until he gets to the 48-yard line. Love to see the fearlessness of a quarterback to work the middle of the field. And he's got so much confidence in his own arm talent to be able to get that football there before the defense can break it up. The Seminoles have it with a first and ten. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Well, it's a nice job by the quarterback getting the ball out of his hands quickly on that RPO. He saw something he liked, just not on the same page with his receiver. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. Leaves it with the running back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. They're trying to run the football. And there's just nowhere to go for the ball carrier inside. He tried to bounce it to the outside. That linebacker way too fast. He met him there and forced the TFL. They've got the ball at midfield, but they're facing a third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. Unloads to the wideout. Makes the grab. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Yeah, and the quarterback knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football. Had time, spins the ball deep. Nice job by this offense, understanding what the defense has given them and creating the explosive play. The Knolls are moving quickly down the field. 
grab behind the line. It's Douglas. Got some room. Hand to the goal line. And he motors into the end zone. Touchdown, Seminoles. That's number two on the day. Having a day. I mean, you know he's going to catch the football, and you know he's going to make plays after he catches. Those are the kind of guys that you feature, and you find them, and they produce like this, and you keep finding them. Lining up to add another. And it's up and good. So a scoring drive there of 83 yards. He'll bring it back from inside his spot. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Gators sending the offense back to work. These two defenses have had their heads spinning here in the first half, and now we might even see a little more scoring with this drive. It's going back and forth. This is like two heavyweights just trading blows, David. What has this defense got to do to get a stop here? I, I tell you what, man. When you're giving up points like this and you've got no momentum, you've got to find somebody that can make the play to create something. And listen, if, you're, if they're scoring anyways, let's be aggressive. Let's blitz more. Let's, let's make sure we're making them feel discomfort in some way, shape, or form. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And that's what makes this defense so difficult to run against. They've got guys up front that just push offensive linemen backwards. They basically push the blockers right into the lap of that running back. They've got them then deep in their own end, and this crowd trying to help keep them there. On third and long, he's going to have to turn one loose downfield. Wide open downfield. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. It's been punch, counterpunch throughout the early part of this game as we take a look at the first quarter stats. We've got a good one going here and looking forward to keep those vibes rolling here in the second. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. Throws to the wideout. He makes a catch. He puts him in business across the 50 into the 46-yard line. It'll be first down. These guys are called matchup guys. They're not the biggest guys on the field, but they're going to win. Short, and they're going to catch the ball, and they're going to make yards after the catch. You can tell those are the type of guys in college football that are starting to get maximized and used a lot more than they were in the past. He's brought down, but not before they pick up the big first down. Well, with the weapons this offense has, you knew it was just a matter of time in the run game before someone was going to break a long one. They'd just been running into a wall that just couldn't seem to find their creases and get enough movement up front, but they finally got it there picking up the first. Let's see what happens next. Running back goes in motion. He'll come out throwing on first down. Grabbed in the backfield. It's Johnson. And they pick up just a few on that completion. You know, sometimes even a short game like that can be used to set up something bigger later on. No doubt, Reese. They can pump that and take a shot down the field. And don't worry. They're going to go back to that same play because they know this guy with the ball in his hands is dangerous. He makes one guy miss. He can take it to the house. Scanning the field, it's Mertz. Let's it fly deep downfield. And it's incomplete after taking a shot on second down. They're staring at third. And this is a quarterback. You're trying to find the matchup, trying to find who's open. I don't know if anybody was open, but that was not a greatly thrown football. I don't know if it was miscommunication, but the ball thrown out of bounds, and just on to the next down. On third down, going up top. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. Here comes the field goal unit. 
and this one is anything but routine. A 48-yard attempt from the right hash. Knocked it right through, showing that big range from 48 yards out. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. And here's the return. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. Power football with the run. How about that elusiveness? He's got space. Now they've got even more breathing room out to the 31 and a fresh set of downs. It's just not easy to bring this guy down, is it? He is so dangerous once he gets the ball in his hands. And it makes me think back to old great seminal running backs like Warwick Dunn, Travis Miner, a guy that I used to play against. Uh, how about Dalvin Cook even? Just guys that could make the first guy miss and then they were able to just explode and burst and take it the distance. This guy right here, he is a unique talent. So you get stuffed on first down. You had an idea of what you wanted to do on second, but I'm guessing it's back to the drawing board now. Yeah, you, you got to figure out who you are and what you are. Uh, what's your next best play? Or what is the defense going to do? If they've been aggressive, okay, well, if they've been aggressive, I'm going to throw that deep ball. If they've been sitting back, I might sneak a draw in here. Got it. Behind the line, it's Lee. They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. After the last run, would you just give it to him again on third down? Looking to throw it to Uyangalale. Gets it out fast. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. Let me tell you, this senior quarterback can flat fit it in a tight window. And the Knolls are flying down the field. Going up top on first down. That's reeled in. It's Lee. And he's able to shed one tackle and gets a pretty good pickup. That last completion sets him up on second down. Grabbed behind the line, it's Douglas. The Seminoles pick up the first down. This is a very tough slot receiver to cover if you're a linebacker because of how quick and how shifty he is. You never seem to know which way he's going, and he always seems to create an open space for his QB. And the Seminoles have it with a first and ten. He's looking to throw it. Fires to the wideout. Grabbed over the middle. It's Benson. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. I know we're a long way up here in the booth, but guys, y'all remember that ball you could throw that whistled? That thing was whistling. It had so many RPMs on it. Now inside the 20. First and ten from the 18. Reads it, fires complete. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play and we'll take a break to check him out. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. Motion from the offense. The give is to Williams. Gets it inside the 10, picks up a yard. They'll mark it at the nine. The terrain gets rough this deep in the red zone. Third down, they can't pick up the first without scoring. 
They'll try to run for it. Tackled after picking up the first down. That is how it's done on third down. It should be no doubt about it. An easy hole to get through and clearly get the first down. If you really want to simplify football, the low man wins. That time, the offense got the better of the D. Easily picked that up. And the Seminoles are threatening on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. They get him on the ground at the three-yard line, but this defense is taking some punches. Now it's second and goal. Trying to pound their way in. And will cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, no! This running back was not going to be denied. Nice blocking up front to create a hole for this running back, and he was able to take advantage. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is good, and it's a four-point lead. They put it in the end zone with a 12-play scoring drive and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit about to go to work. And he takes this from inside the five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Guys, that last trip a little disappointing having to take the three. Yeah, and I think, Jesse, you see so many offenses talk about getting yards and the tempo and all the stuff they do. It was a nice job moving the football, but they got to get in the end zone this time. Yeah, and I think to do that, they just got to be more physical at the point of attack, get some push up front. They need to be the best running team in this game to win. Now on second down after the incompletion. They'll give it to the back. Got enough for the first down. Moves it out to the 34-yard line. A nice 15-yard gain on that one. That's a really good-looking run. I tell you, it's not easy to start at the running back position for the Florida Gators. When you think of where they can recruit in the state of Florida and really nationally, they've got a lot of the best around the country in high school wanting to come play here. So it says a lot if you're RB1 in this offense, but this dude shows you why. Speed and playmaking ability all day long. A strike downfield. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. And after that pitch and catch, he's already over 200 yards, and we're in the first half, Jesse. Man, Reese, he's dialed in right now. He's really doing a nice job seeing the field, reading coverages, and finding his open guy. The clock has reached the two-minute mark, and they have a chance to at least cut into this lead before the break. The Gators come to the line with a new set of downs. Looking to go up top on first down. Just a short pass to the tight end. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. It must be nice for this quarterback knowing he's got this type of athlete playing the tight end position. That can work the middle of the field for him. He's a guy who can stretch it vertically as well. But this is a guy the QB will look for early and often in this game. Looking downfield, it's Mertz. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. Tackle is made at the 33. It's about a five-yard pickup, and that'll be enough for a first down. Knowing that your man can make the catch against his defender, that wasn't a big play, but it can set you up down the line to be able to take advantage. Yes, get it to him as fast as I can. When I see him open, he runs the little hitch, get it to him so he can make a little bit of yards after the catch, and eventually that little gain, he's going to bust one of those with his athletic ability.
Down to the 12 yard line, it's first down. He wants to throw. And it's picked up at the goal line. That's one way to make a stop. And he's brought down, and his defense gets the ball back for its own. You gotta be sharp in the red zone. You, you can't turn the football over in the red zone. You gotta be crisp, you gotta be on time. You can tell the QB wasn't on time. The defender made him pay. Nice interception, stealing points now off the board. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. That last drive, an absolute aerial assault for the touchdown, Jesse. But it was a nice job in play calling, too, David, just giving the quarterback some easy looks and reads so he could go out and execute. And he knew exactly where to go with the football. Everything looked really, really easy. He was hot. The ball was coming out of his hands. The defense better do something different. Wants to fire on second down. Using the back as a receiver on the screen. And the completion gives him a fresh set of downs and keeps this drive moving. Hey, man, sometimes you get the perfect play call at the perfect time. That time, the defense blitzing. Offensive line allowed everybody to run upfield, and they slip in the running back screen, and behind it, there was nobody there to make a tackle. And this offense generates a massive play. Grabbed in the middle. It's Douglas. They stop him almost immediately. Short gain there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. Well, these wide receivers work the middle of the field. So much of this is field. Understanding where the holes are in the zone or understanding how to get leverage on a man. And these wide receivers are dangerous nowadays because they do it so fast and see that so quick and make those plays over the middle. The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. This offense has a second down play. To the air. It's Uyangalale. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. Well, that's just a great play by the defender and great timing. It was the hit that forced that incompletion. They'll try to move the chains on third and short from the 25. They go to the ground. And the defense had his hands full, but they finally wrestle him down short of the first down. There's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. The Seminoles line up to punt it away. Not going to risk a return here. Calls for the fair catch and makes it just around the 30-yard line. Just a few seconds remaining here as they try to put something up before halftime. They're trying to get to it. And the defense is all over the quarterback, and down he goes. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. All right, gentlemen. Seldom do the rational turn irrational the way they do when these two teams and fan bases get together in the Sunshine Showdown. Toughest job inside that stadium right now might just be the scoreboard operator after all those first downs and touchdowns. Big plays have defined this one thanks to two of the best receiving core in all of college football. Let's see if these defenses can adjust and make the necessary chess moves. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the battle between Florida State and Florida plays out. And the Gators will boot it away to start the second half. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. Got the quick completion. Nice, solid form tackle from this sophomore. Great effort by the defense here. Offense trying to go wide receiver screen. How about the speed on defense rounding to the football? Here comes the offense on second down. 
Now they'll run it to the right here. Can't get him to the ground. They knock him down after a gain of three to the 23. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. On third down, he drops to throw. Makes the grab. It's West. And boy, is he close to that first down. Maybe just a couple of inches short just not able to shake enough defenders and comes up a little bit short. And I think a lot of times on third down, Reese, you bet on your guy. When you're an offensive guy, you say, okay, he's going to break a tackle. He's going to get north and south and somehow get the first down. Nice tackling by the defense, understanding where they had to get to and forcing the fourth down. He'll call for the fair catch here. The Gators sending the offense back to work. The handoff to Johnson. Finds that crease, and he's got four out to the 29. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. He'll keep it himself. And the defense snows him under after a very short game. Quarterbacks generally, guys, we know, they're not as big and not as physical runners as running backs. So it is going to be trickier for them to break tackles. I like the idea of getting the design quarterback run game going. But moving forward, let's see if we can get him out to the front. This is where you make the money on the drive. Ball at the 30, it's third and short. Looking to pass, it's Mertz. Makes the grab over the middle. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. The Gators will line it up on first and ten. Give to the running back. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Man, what a play by that defensive lineman. You, you could say he was channeling his inner power. And that's what defensive linemen do. Big, fast, one of the most athletic players on the field, getting in the backfield, just beautiful. You know, you could have shown a little humility there and said, aw, shucks, or something. Aw, shucks, or something. And they'll bring him to the ground after a short game. wants to pass and that's incomplete a defender all over him knocked the ball to the ground fourth down coming up it's a nice job by the receiver working past the sticks looked like it was going to be a first down by the offense but how about the physical play knocking that ball loose the Gators send out the punt unit they'll look to pin him deep No return coming. He'll call for the fair catch. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. They missed an opportunity to extend this lead the last time they had it, Jesse. Yeah, they got to be able to regain that momentum, right? Go back to what was working earlier on in this one. And David, to me, that starts with being the more physical team. No, I definitely agree. Being the more physical team, but understanding the situation of the game. You're still winning. You got the football back. Now put a nice drive together and execute with a first down, they'll snap it from the 32. Looking for a man, it's Uyangalale. Finds a tight end. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. It's important on offense to get the tight ends involved in the passing game. These are big fellas that can run. This guy's a big target, so nice job on that play. Line getting set on second down. Hands it off. And they try the middle of this defense, and that is not happening. Man, nowhere to run on that play at all. About all you can say is do better. But that's the problem. Are they able to do better? 
and that's why you keep trying things, right? Keep trying to get on the perimeter, run it up the middle, try different things to see what you do well. Got it looking for a first. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. Well, offensive coordinators put in countless hours every week trying to formate and use different personnel groupings and shifts and motions to give their offense a success on third down. You can tell in this game, this offensive coordinator, he has put in the work this week. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. So he gets stuffed on first down, and now you have the offensive coordinator thinking a little bit. Yeah, we're probably going to have to throw it now on this second play, but what are we going to see defensively? Now that they know we're throwing, might they blitz us? Do I have to leave more guys in to block? There's a real cat and mouse game going on right now between these two coaching staffs. On second down, wants to throw. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical and pass deep. The D thinking bring some heat on third and long from the 44. Dropping back, it's Uyangalale. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense, and now it's fourth down. That's why it's so important for this defense to win first and second down. You set up third and longs like that. You can show your exotic looks. You can get the pass rush going. Everybody in the back end expecting throw. And that's how you force incompletions and force fourth downs. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. And the punt will hit at the seven, and they can't corral it. It goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. They'll give it to Johnson. Stopped at the 25 after a five-yard gain. I, I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make them honor the run. Make them know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. They feed him again. Finally pulled down, but not before. Moving the chains for a first down. Wow, the running back there showing you his skill set as he's able to rip off that one for a first down. They'll snap this one from the 32. It's first down. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. I'll tell you what, that was a lightning fast decision. You could tell he knew what he wanted to do right away. Makes the decision, but maybe his footwork wasn't a little bit good, and the pass wasn't where he wanted to put that thing. I know that. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Looking downfield, it's Mertz. He looks that one in nicely. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. To the air on first down. Those two failed to make the connection. It's an incomplete pass. Now second and ten. He's looking to throw. It's caught. He almost picked up the first down on that one, but he'll be just a little bit short. That big pickup on what they call the drag route, but if you hit it on time, you can hit the turbo boost. And you've got to be accurate on the throw, too, Reese. Nice job by the QB there, putting it out in front of his receiver to make an easy catch and then advance it. 
On third and short, they'll try to pick it up with the pass. Great job by the defense there. They weren't surprised by that play call there on third and short. They were expecting pass. They took everything away and forced the incompletion. And the Gators will punt this one away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. And no shot at a return here as the punt flies out of bounds. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. Their drive chart is starting to look a little monotonous. Punt, 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 David. And their defense is starting to get a little frustrated, too. They just keep putting me back on the field, possession after possession. Jesse, this offense needs to get their heads out of there, you know what. The punter's on the sideline with the oxygen mask right now. He's been playing so much. He's not used to this. This offense, they just got to stay on the field. They've got to put a drive together and get some balance going, running and throwing the ball. Got it set up on the outside. And the defense able to drag him down, but not before. They'll recycle that down marker. The offense lining up for a first down play. The give is to Williams. Nowhere to go on that run, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the quarter, and Florida State has the lead. They've done the work to build a nice cushion now to bring it home as we check out the stats after three quarters. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Going to the ground. Got enough for the first down and wants more. And it is a chunk play. A huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. Maybe this will breathe the little life into this offense, which has been flatlined in the second half. Here's first and ten. Running back searching for a hole. And he'll pick up one. It brings up second and nine. Kept it on the ground on first down. Now back to the line. Back to throw. It's Uyunga Lele. Pocket starts to collapse. And the quarterback is snowed under. Man, that's a great example of KYP. Know your personnel. A QB that doesn't run great, trying to get outside of the pocket. Nice job by the defense applying pressure and running him down and getting the huge loss. Ball's at the 27. This offense facing a third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Caught over the middle. It's Benson. They got him free for a big gainer to the 43. Well, how about the offense setting that play up? We've seen earlier in the game a couple of shorter throws. They're just trying to suck those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, anticipating that they would get an opportunity to take a shot. They called the perfect play at the perfect time right there. The Seminoles have it with a first and ten. Here's the handoff. You'll take this every time. Five yards on the first down play. You got to give the coaching staff credit because they really do focus all season long on situational football with the lead late in the game. If we're on offense, we're trying to stay in bounds. We're trying to bleed the clock. And after ripping off a really nice run, that guy knew I've got to get down. I cannot get pushed out of bounds, cannot get tackled out of bounds. Really, really nice job. Try to get the edge with a quick touch pass. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. They want to continue this long drive. Ninth play coming. It's third and five. To throw. It's Uyangalale. 
unloads to the wideout. Got him downfield. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. Well, this defense is trying to find ways to disguise their coverage and mix it up to try to confuse the QB. It's not working, though. With that last completion, he's now got over 300 yards passing. This defense just can't get off the field. The offense, unstoppable. Using the quick game. He's all the way down to the two-yard line. Just spectacular execution there. Now, I think this receiver's forte is his route running. He's a guy that can line up all over the field, but it's not just catching post routes and goes. This guy can run shallows. He can run slants. He can run the option routes and find soft spots in the defense. This guy really has all the routes in his toolbox. Toss sweep to the right. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. So on offense, you've got to find a way to put six up on the board. You know that in this game, field goals may not get it done. So big-time players make big plays in big games. Who can you rely on right now to get you a touchdown? Boy, they'd love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. He's looking to throw on third and short. Reels it in, in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State his third touchdown pass of the day. The defense has no clue how to respond right now. No, and the defense has had absolutely no answer. He's been on the money. He's been on fire, making the right decisions and just carving this defense up. to attempt the try. And the extra point is up and good, and they have an 11-point fourth quarter lead. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And they finish it up with a three-yard scoring toss. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. They hope to be able to cash in on this drive, David, after having to punt it last time. Yeah, and I think this offense needs to start it with the first play. You need to be successful and productive on that first play, and it gets you in less predictable situations. No doubt, too. Don't you just feel like there's a little bit more sense of urgency on this drive? It just feels like they've got to be able to put some points up on the board here. And now on second down for this offense. From the gun, the ground game. Works ahead for a couple. They'll stop him at the 27. And a nice second effort by the back to break a tackle. But how about those defensive backs willing to come up, stick their face in the fan, and make a tackle? Those are the best run defenses, too, right? It's not just D-linemen and linebackers getting all the plays, but it's DBs that are willing to not just cover, but tackle backs in the open field. They'll move those chains, getting it out to the 29-yard line and trying to get this drive rolling. Well, the good news is, is you got the first down running it there on second and short, but the bad news is you're down by quite a bit here in the fourth quarter, and two, three, four-yard gains aren't going to get it done. You've got to start chucking this thing vertically to get back in the game. Finally, some signs of life from this offense, which has done nothing in the second half. It's first and ten. Through his hands and incomplete. He normally makes that catch every time it's second down. Well, they're trying to hit the slant, right? That's a bang-bang type play. It's got to happen fast. Good throw. Receiver just couldn't come up with the catch. The incomplete pass leaves him with second down. It'll be a draw. Not a lot going on there. Picked up a couple. rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. On the move, it's Mertz. He finds his man. Oh, what a move! They got him free for a big gainer down to the 43. 
Well, trailing like they are right now in the fourth quarter, their execution offensively is just going to have to be at a premium. You can't afford a lot of incompletions at this point. Everybody is going to need to be on the same page moving forward. The Gators want to pick up the tempo. Comes out throwing on first down. Fires to the right. Right on the money to the outside. He dragged the toe. And how about the ball placement? Only the receiver could get it. And there's no quit in this team. Obviously, they're trailing late in the game, but they're trying to make it happen. We've seen two big plays now back to back. They're putting pressure on this defense. The Gators will have it first and 10. Looking to move it through the air. Quickly complete. Yeah, and he runs a quick out route. And this is a timing route. Quarterback has to trust him, throw him the football. You can tell they've thrown this a time or two. Nice job, nice success. Right on target with that last pass. Now it's second and medium. He's looking to throw. Got it in the middle. It's Hanson. And they make the tackle, but he has plenty for the first down. Ever since they invented the forward pass, the tight ends have been running the drag and getting the first down. I think it's because the tight ends, is so much versatility. You know, they can block and stay in the formation, or they can release and come out. But either way, if the quarterback's patient, most of the time, that drag route's going to come over. They're in the red zone, and they'll pass it. Fires to the right. And he dropped it. It looked for all the world like that would be a catch, and he just got too excited. Tight ends are supposed to be the quarterback security blanket, especially down here in the red zone. And that time, he just dropped it. Second down here, and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two-minute warning. Looking for a man. It's Mertz. Throwing right. And the pass is incomplete thanks to a big hit. Oh, and the offense just not able to come up with that. You knew that was going to be a bang-bang play, right? They're taking a shot into the end zone. That's going to have to be a contested catch on the back end. But he wasn't able to come up with it because of the hit. It's third down now. They ought to be able to get off one more play before the two-minute warning. Unleashes one deep. Throw to the end zone. Picked off. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this offense is that much closer to salting away a victory. They'll run it to keep this clock grinding. That may not look like a huge run, but they'll take it as it gets them up to the 24. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. Out of the gun, the inside handoff, looking for a crease. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. Yeah, it's make or break time for this defense. Now, they got to get a stop. And if that's bringing more bodies in, bringing more beef in, they're running the football right up the gut, right at you. They're not going to throw the football in this situation. Time to be more physical and get this big stop. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. That's got to be demoralizing if you're the defense. You're trailing. You need to get the ball back. you got to get off the field, but you can't stop the run when they're going between the tackles. This defense is going to have to get a lot more physical, especially in the middle. 